Right, welcome back. Um, we need to s figure out what the crap is going on. So I launched my game. It takes ages, but now I've, I've got back. I open the file manager is still a bit of a bugger. I'm not sure what it is, you see. Do we need to investigate? Do some performance testing or something. So we need to say like Linux check disk speed because it could be a file system thing. Um, so um, the disk application. I don't have that's KDE. Well, I'm in KDE, so. That's all right. But yeah, have you guys got any ideas on how we can test to figure out why my PC is going slow? Give us a go. I want to I double check what this application is. HD what? Param. Well. But we, we ain't got it, have we? Right, you can get it though. Um, I wonder if it's IO. We can always just try and write files, right? That's another one. Yes, input file zero. Got DD, right? Let's try this. Um, let's go to let's go to some test folder just in case. So we'll go um, test. Let's put that in there. Right. So it's copied. So it's like a ten k. Right. 84 megabytes. That's pretty quick, right? 2.6 gigabits a second. Sorry, bytes, gigabytes a second. Doesn't feel like that's the problem. Is Microsoft taking a screenshot every five seconds? No, but this is not. This is not Windows. <laughs> um. Yeah. So we can roll out disk I/O. Um, being the issue. So if I literally just run the game, there's some part in the setup which is taking time. So the other thing we can do is comment out the code and figure out like what it is. Um, like we can just basically put an exit in there and then so that's quite an easy thing to do. So we're going to source main. So we put an exit. So we put an exit here, right? It's just an exit zero. Um, and if we compile and run it, and if that's pretty quick, there you go. That was reasonable. So I ran two compilers and then. It should, should have just launched the game. So that's what the speed we're kind of expecting. So let's do the after OS initialize. Does it have the same problem? Right, we get starting to see a problem. So it's probably in the OS initialize. Um, so that will open up a window and everything. So it could be the X11 side of things. So that was pretty quick, right? So let's go inside OS initialize and see what's in there. So it goes into the back end. So let's try let's try somewhere like let's try before we open a window. That was pretty all right. That's the speed that we're expecting. A couple of seconds because it I run like two compilers. So 
Let's do it after we create the X window. So it could be the X11 server bit in slow. There we go, it is. Why has my X11 server just got slow all of a sudden? Did, is this a conspiracy? They want me to use Wayland now? Like what is... I haven't even updated my system. So something about the X, X11 server got slow. It's not even forwarding. So what is slow is doing any X11 stuff for some reason. What have I done? Um, well, I could update my system. Yeah, I finally got rust in the kernel. Hmm. Maybe. But yeah, so that open a window is a thing that takes time, apparently, but it shouldn't be taking... Like, where's to time it? Um... I haven't really got timing functions, but if we just put a breakpoint here, compile it. Mm. No? Why is this one taking its time? Seems like there's some other problems. Maybe the exit call is enable. I don't know. So we do it next. That was pretty quick. Okay. Maybe, just maybe, it's not the opening that's the problem. Maybe the exit call made it so that it compiled stuff out. I don't know, but it's in debug build. Um, so if we do the X display, open. Let's see if it takes a long time there. That was kind of all right. Uh, let's go after X keyboard. That was kind of okay. It's a bit slower though. I think the X11 stuff is what's causing the problem. And then this is UDEV. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and 10 and 11. So I think it's UDEV and maybe X11 uses you know, but why is it why is this so slow? Um, so we can put the breakpoint in and then actually like go around in the debugger and just see painfully like which line it is maybe when we do a next. Um, so we do a next, next, next. Well those seem sensible. Scan devices. Look how slow that is. Does it go back around again? No. But that scan devices was quite slow. So you dev scan devices slow. My boot dev it's taking a long time after starting is printed out. This is what I've been getting. 
This is why it took so long to start the stream back up. Twelve years ago, though. Hmm. Yeah, so something to do with UDEV is slow. Those so that enumerate scan devices, but this is. It's slow, but my whole system is slow. Hmm. Eager to, thank you so much for sub, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. I call that support 18 months. Appreciate it. How have you been? <sighs> my whole system is slow because of you dev and i don't know why i could just comment the line out for now but they ain't, ain't a good solution could we um could we do that i don't know if i'll get it would save my controller support but we're not using that at the moment See, but it's still making X11 slow to do all the X11 bits. So it's not really going to help us if I uncomment just one of them. Yeah, I think X11 probably uses UDEV under the hood. Sounds about right. Right, I think I might update my system and then we'll give it another go. Update in live. Let's roll. There we go. What I really like about um, Archwoman and Jerry is a lot of the time the net size always goes down. It's pretty neat. But it's got tons of crap installed. Thanks to Manjaro. But anyway, fingers crossed this will fix it. Maybe there's something to do with, maybe there's like a huge log file or something, I don't know. Or have I got something that's plugged in that it doesn't like? Is there a USB device that my system doesn't like that's plugged in? Well, I can't figure that out without taking all my stuff off. off. Oh well. But yeah, I guess we'll update that and see how stuff goes. We'll just uh, do stuff in the background, I guess. Ugh, horrendous. Doing alright, hope you're doing well. Yeah, not doing bad. I'm just sad that my system just got slow and I don't even know why. Um Hmm. 
See, I don't even know what it got stuck on because I didn't see anything on the boot when I boot. Maybe we can see what's... Oh, okay. Syslog. Where, where, where do we see... Is that in... Um... Var log. Where is this log? Turning off auto loader modules, reboot, and load. And one by one, it's usually taking a long time. Yeah, but it's not. All right, let's get this hardware thing, hardware detect, and see what's up. Well, it's currently installed in all the updates, so maybe this will fix it. Mm -hmm. Fingers crossed. Is there any UDEV in here? Run a build hook UDEV, update in um, hardware database. So things would have changed. Just hopefully the right things have changed. Okay. So does my game boot up okay now? No. It would have booted by now. Um. Let's do a pseudo Pac-Man hardware detect. See what's up. So person said run this. Oh. I don't know. I don't see any modules. There is a bunch of UDEV functions though. UDEV, um, so you can like, there's a bunch of UDEV things, I forget them though. There's a way to like, I don't know. You'd have monitor listen for the kernel to kernel and you'd have events. So monitor Right, it's no dash dash. Um Print new dev events, but that'll be when you connect and can disconnect and connect stuff. So if I disconnect my mouse and then reconnect it, will show up right. That seems all right. Seems pretty solid. So why did my game take so long to do all that new dev stuff? The disk speed is fine, we've checked that. What's this syslog thing?
Yeah, I don't have a syslog file. Should be in journal CTL. USB cable is bad. Maybe this could be it. This seems pretty crazy, doesn't it? What's a bad USB cable? Maybe this is slowing it down. I'd, I'd have to unplug all my stuff and figure out which one it is. But I've only got like four. Um, it should be able to tell me right which one it is. Port four, okay, whatever that is. Um, I've got a hub that everything is connected to, but. Could be my keyboard, my keyboard's all fine. What's the other one? Webcam. Okay. Is the um, is the microphone, and we're obviously all working. Well, that was until I just bug it, moved it around. Um. Right. What I'm gonna do. Is, uh. What cap's going on here? Let's try that out. There we go. So, um, I think what I'll do is I'll unplug my USBs and only plug in the keyboard and then see if that same problem pops up. Like, what is this? It happens like every... It's crazy. Right, let's try that out. So my, my face will freeze. Right. Hello. I have returned. So, we have found out news. News. And that news is, let me get this freeze frame off. What is it doing? Right. Ooh. We'll just keep it there. So, the news is, right, when I unplugged everything but my keyboard, the dash or the 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 error didn't show up anymore right so i'm running this journal control dash f right as you do um and it's not showing up anymore it was showing this sort of like bad usb so maybe it's my hub or it's either my um webcam or the audio card thing i have so um, but yeah, so when we ran the game, it booted up straight away, right? 
That's all right, isn't it? That's what I wanted. Right, so it's, I think we fixed it now. I don't know what I did. I just unplugged my USB and plugged it back in again. But yeah, something to keep an eye out on. But at least we now know that it was the bad USB thing. What a bugger that was. Right, so let's get back the, um, the camera. I'm sorry, this, there we go. Hey, so, um, let's get back to actually programming. All right, that was a really annoying detour. Yeah, I tried to turn it off and on again. I tried, I tried the original classic, but the original classic didn't work. Plugging it, but it had to be the other one. You always have to try all those. It's always when you ask IT at work, isn't it? Like, have you tried turning it off and on again? Like, yes. Um, right, so now we can finally get back to... Oh. So, was initializing a... Um, hang on a minute. An entity system. But it crashes um, for some reason. The stack trace is... or well, the stack is corrupted. So, it's probably a we overwrite on um, things on the stack, basically. Um, and we probably ruin the instruction pointer. Um, but yeah, we'll go into um, GF, give that a run. Straight away it boosts up. This is what we're talking about. Right, so this one has the stack for some reason. Anyway, so in system, and it would even get too far, we try to out. Are these function pointers there? Pull init functions. All right. It's got two function pointers in there, organism and block, and then a zero at the end, All right? So if we do a archetype. Oh, yeah, archetype zero is null. I've got a null archetype. That could be cause me some problems in places, but yeah. Right, so in our code generator, uh, entity gen, engine, we have these See, this is why I should have just used the um, designated initializers, like any good C programmer would. Best feature of C99. Right, so now it's rerun the code generator. Nice, rerun the game. And still got a problem. Um, let's get a proper stack trace. That one didn't work. Archetype pool in it zero non zero non zero right of course the zero is still gonna do its thing so we should start on a one that's a shame when do we iterate over all these archetypes do we do that much Probably not. Right, a few places here. So we'll start on an archetype null plus one. 
which is 0 plus 1, which is just I put 1 in there. Okay. Um, so we're on that. Still got another problem. Will I to check for this issue? What do you mean only having fun? I don't get the uh, the joke. Oh, okay. System in it. Didn't do an ear either. Um, yeah, I need to... um. Get the music back now that we're back in business. Um, all right. Cool. So, can we initialize the system? And the answer is yes, apparently. So, now we've initialized the entity system. We don't know if we've done it correctly. Right, so now the next thing we're going to do is create some entities. So we're going to create, so let's instantiate, let's do a, let's do a couple of um, player entities or something. So ent organism um, o dot coordinate let's chuck you in a uh, zero zero and zero and then we'll do a a model the model ID you're gonna get is dun, 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 a graphics model player right this is all hard-coded enum stuff right now but in the future these will be probably some more you know they'll point to an asset on on disk or something but this will do. So we need to say ent um, organism uh, init deferred. So it's going to create it later on. So it will create it. So this is where we do all the operating system events we can detect controllers being plugged in and unplugged and raw mouse input virtual you know raw input virtual input um window stuff so now this is where the game simulation stuff will end up going right we've not done any of this yet so we're just going to start it. here's entity frame start yep. so we're going to start a frame and this is where i will do all the deferred actions um in there so when we get created then in the graphics payload when we create stuff so we're going to create one by default we'll create the tile this will be up there but we're going to use the entity iterator so the reason why i'm going to make one get created is because i can't my bvh has a limitation we must have at least two things it can't handle one thing at the moment um so if we go into the uh nc generator there is a test iterator thing and we're going to bring it out so we should probably have this um, around somewhere because it is a bit of a pain to write out, but okay. the best API I could come up with. So we're going to iterate over all the entities within a radius, um, no, a radius within a, um, what's the iterator again? within a min max let's just go over a bunch of regions 
So we're going to have a filter of every archetype and we're going to go from region uh, 0, 0, 0 to region, what's the number of regions we had? Uh, we initialized it up here, right? It was four, three, four, two, three, one, three. So we'll do three, one, three. So we we'll check all of the regions. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and do a, we want to, right, everyone's going to have a coordinate. Yeah, when everyone with like a rendering, what is it? Uh, model ID. Is that what we called it in the property file? Yeah, model ID. So everything with a model ID, we want to iterate over those. So we have all the archetypes. Then we fetch the coordinate array. I think that's just called coordinate array now. Um, NC.h. Why don't I see this? So there's a way to do a coordinate get. But I can't get my coordinate array. We need a way to be able to get that. So the coordinates are there. Um, let's put it here. So ent. Wait, wait a minute. Coordinates should be read only. Because they have to, the move has to be deferred in this system that we've designed. Um, coord, coords, coord array, I think that will be the, yeah, chord array, we'll call it that. Bit of void. Uh, I just gotta find some way to throw it. Yeah, maybe I could chuck it in here. But yeah, it's going to do like a... <sighs> You've got to pass in at least an archetype. Return g ent system archetype pools archetype dot header dot chords now is this can this be moved somewhere more sensible there is an archetype yeah i can stick it here with this one Um, archetype property exists. So I'll take that. Right, chuck that there, that'd be cool. Right, so if we go back to um, the iterator, archetype coordinate array, you pass in your archetype and you get back all the coordinates. Um, Weapon ID, so this weapon thing was just an example, but we want to use a proper thing now, so it's the graphics model ID. So model ID array, um, model ID. So now we go over all of the the ranges. So this would be all of the different regions. Um, and we get a range, a range of entities back out, which would be quite nice. Um, so 
Yeah, we just got to figure out what's wrong. So we get the star and end index. We iterate over all of them within that region. Um, then we can use these arrays to do things. So we've got the coordinate. We just want to make a model instance, right? That's all we would like to do. Nothing too annoying. Um, so we push on a model instance and then we, um, you know, this one's got to be the player, but that would be um, model, and we'll get it here, graphics, model ID, model ID, or model ID array with the entity index. So we pull that out, chuck it in there, and now the translation is going to be whatever this coordinate is for now. Coordinate dot x, coordinate y, coordinate z. But in future, it might be something else. We'll see. We might pass in view view um, space coordinates. We'll see. To the renderer. Um. Yeah. So let's delete the rest of this and let's just see if the entity system works. This is our iterator um, and it's iterating over all the entities we have. So we only have one. Um, so we, we kind of want to have So why don't we just put in a breakpoint? Um, so we hit here, we've at least hit it once. Oh, what's going on? Ah, oh, the comma. Whoopsie. I need to make a friendly version of this. See that compiles. Nice. So we should have hit the um ah. right. So in the um in it deferred, we have tried to allocate a record and it's failed. Trying to allocate a stop which is already allocated. Strange. Maybe I haven't zeroed anything. Why no channel points? Um, because it's an investment. I used to have them back on our streams a lot more. Um, it's in my own, my own maths library. Um, yeah, it's in my own maths library. It's on GitHub. So HCC is my custom C compiler for Spear V. So I can program in a subset of C for shaders. Um, and then libhmaths is the maths library that kind of, kind of gets used along with the compiler, but it's not required. And in here I've got all the types declared. Um, 
here. So they're just here, they're just unions. So we can define, we can do, you know, we can alias the fields with different names. Hey, Elwood, how you doing? No, you don't pay for channel points. Well, yeah, you do, you pay um, the time of setting them up, set, setting up good ones that people actually want to use and, um, and then you also pay the cost of fulfilling the channel point. My, I used to have some quite good ones. I used to have basically lifting weights. I used to, people would like save up all their points and then just like screw me with like tons of exercises to do and I'll do them. But I don't really have the time to do that now. I used to have more of the time to do that. But yeah, none of that anymore. So, right. Record port alloc. What is going on here? Assert is free. Well, that expects it to be set to true initially. So, hang on a minute. Let's invert the other way around because default is zero. You know what I mean? This is the way. So when do we ever set it to true? There we go. So we haven't initialized the stack, um, one of these global arrays. Uh, frame star four two two. Um, ah, the dialog queue. Record pool in it. Right. Core stack in it. Uh, pool dialog queue. Uh, capac allocator capacity. Right, that was missing. To do handle single leaf BVH tree. So it seems like we didn't actually iterate over entities that we would have expected to. Um, and I don't know why that is. Um, so let's go back to that thing. So this should, like, um, Right, so let's see if we reach here. See what happens. Right, so we don't even get past the next archetype function by the looks of it. Yeah, yeah. so this prints out here now. Okay, so we're going to put a breakpoint in and then we're going to analyze like what the crap is going on in this function. It doesn't have to be sports related rewards though. Yeah, but then I have to set it up. Now what, you know, hydrate, I guess could be one, that's simple, but you know, 
Everyone doesn't hydrate. And what happens if I just drown drinking too much water? I found myself around this sort of sea so I can have a array list which contains an array size, capacity, and real lock. You know, experience to me, any other arrays. So I've got a video on that. Um, but that's not a bad approach. Uh, I'd do a similar thing. Hang on a minute. It's on the VOD channel. There's also, you um, yeah, if you guys want to see what we've got planned for the next eight months, you can check out this video. It's a good one. Um, but yeah, on the VOD channel, which is a separate channel, there is, if you go back to always the beginning, um, after I've done the Vulcan stuff, I was like, you know what, we need dynamic arrays now. Custom allocators and stack T. This is the video going over making what we have today, but I can give a brief digest. So, first of all, grow bore arrays kind of suck. Like, it's okay to have an array which grows in count but not capacity. Um, because then it reallocates. Then your best way of solving that is to, is to do a mem copy. And if you do a mem copy, if you have a pointer to any of that memory, all those pointers are now invalid, right? Because the, the memory has moved and you've deallocated the old range. So getting rid of a, a whole he heap of issues. Um, you know, you can have sta stable pointers this way. Um, you don't have to do like a growth factor. Some people do just do a growth factor of times in by two. Some people do a growth factor of 1.5. Um, you don't have to have that solution anymore. You've also got the other thing of global arrays where um, what else we got? I don't know. I've forgotten, but I will remember it. But on to another thing, we have to declare a stack type for every element type that we want, which is all right. It works, I haven't found a problem with it. If I need to forward declare it, I can forward declare it with this macro. Uh, there's also a void version. Now the beauty of the void version is this. We can just implement the functions without any type code, um, you know, for, 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 for stacks at least, like a growable array, we don't need to ge code generate anything. It can all work with size of and a line of being passed in and that's it. Um, yeah, um, the custom allocator. Oh yeah, th this is another thing as well. The other problem with making the array reallocate is on the push. It's going to possibly, rather than just being adding an integer and getting a pointer back, right? Like this one does here. It could possibly decide to reallocate, which is slow, uh, and do a whole copy. So this keeps it more consistent, right? Keeps the variability of this function down a lot. Right, it's either super quick or super slow. Um, then the other point is as well, is that the custom allocator is always passed in when you initialize and passed in when you deinitialize the stack. Now the beauty of this is that we don't have to store the allocator like most new, new age programming languages languages do is I'll store the allocator in here and you've just added more memory right and turns out guess what happens 
You have a whole bunch of stacks next to each other in memory which all use the same custom allocator. And this is like, you know, 16 bytes. It's not a small amount of memory, right? So this design keeps that down. And if you have a global array and you take this approach where you pass it in, for the push operation, you'd need to take in the custom allocator. So by not having that resizable capacity, it really opens the door for like this explicit passing in of the allocator, right? Um, otherwise the push operation just becomes annoying, basically. Um, yeah, or you could do it where you could have an explicit function, which does the reallocation of the capacity, but I haven't done that because I don't need it. Um, but yeah, that's my two cents on the growable array design. Highly recommend. Yeah, for the generic type, yeah. Enable if trivially, ah, oh, damn it very much. Zero size types. Sure what that means. What is a zero size type, huh? Those don't exist in C. Right, I see zero sized allocator. Yeah, but in the new languages, they do like allocator interfaces. Right, so it's going to hear what happens. Seems all right. What is this filter? without so it's all bits on but the first one the first one would be Yeah, that's all right. Will be null, so it skips null. So you get the least set bit one. Wait, did we not set it to archetype? What is going on? Right, no, no, no. It increments it by one. Hang on a minute. Mm. Oh, right. That's that's the problem. Yes, there's another problem here that I see. But let's figure out this. So, what is it? A props. Um. Yeah, I did this logic a bit wrong. We'll fix that. So we can say, ensure this property exists and ensure this property doesn't exist when we iterate over these things. Um, okay, so this needs to be archetype plus one. Then this one is check the properties bit set of the pool, so of the archetype, and end it with the not of properties not in bit set. So, I think that not shouldn't be in there because I'm not equal zero there. So that would be if you have an overlap. Yeah, that should be it. Right, we hit the other sig trap. 
So the other breakpoint, programmatic breakpoint right here. Um, so this means we can go into the debugger and just advance it and uh, see what what happens. Oh no, okay, maybe not. Right, okay, so we are gonna go here. We push on that one to the break point, yep. Oh, I don't know why it's not getting out of there. Oh, so warm. Right, okay, so it goes round after the full loop, checks again. Let's see where we're at. End index, one, index, zero. Okay, so it would have oh, added one and then, okay. It went to the next archetype. That's okay, that's archetype two, isn't it? That's blocks, yep. So, and then we realize, hey, blocks don't have anything. So it ends, perfect, sweet. So that should be our first entity in the game. We're gonna have a block which is gonna be in there as well, but ignore that one. This is hard coded this one to render, but that's okay. This guy is the entity. Look at him. Like a little snowman without the snow. So now the plan is to add more. You know. Be fruitful and multiply. In C++, they have a, they have straight the compiler to get the var inheritance and whatnot. It's like a compressed pair, A, B. Oh, what? Bananas. <laughs> so, um, let's actually just add more entities in. We can remove this one here. And we can probably do some ground tiles as well. Um, okay. Um, So if we add another entity, so we'll add one, two to the right, add one, two more to the right. Wait a minute. Yeah, we've got more, more regions. So this one will be in the next region. And then we'll debug draw the regions. And uh, you know, we'll go on from there, be good. Right, what do we see? Nothing. We should be seeing three of these guys. We're going to print out one one of them because we've only changed X. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and just do another print. just to separate it between frames. Right, zero, zero, zero. So clearly we're not instantiating coordinate 
inside the entity system. So when we call so an entity dot c sys frame start, we create all the entities. Oh no, they're created differently. Um, in a deferred. Right, alloc deferred. So when you pass in coordinate, is it not doing anything? Yes, yeah, so it's just used to get the region. So we need to and say pool coordinate and index equal coord. All right, so that should do it. Nice. Here's our three entities. They are unnamed entities. They're just yeah, whatever. Three of them. Baum. It's a template. B stores B. Has no one size rule. Right. From my understanding, though, in C++, you had zero size types anyway. Right, in C++, you can just have an empty strut, from my understanding. I think so. I think it's a C, a C thing where you can't have it. Evaganda. CPP, and then you just strut very much. Zero size very much, yeah, but that one compile in C. Oh, you think it's one byte? Um, size of ray march equal one. I have been forward. So you can get a zero size type in a weird way. Isn't that bananas? C++ is doomed. You can use Vulkan in C and not C++. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, although I wouldn't recommend like, have you done any, what, what level of graphics programming have you done before? So the best thing about Vulkan is that it has a, uh, Vulkan underscore core dot H is all you need. All the C++ stuff is just extra stuff they've code generated, which is horrible. Hundreds of thousands of lines of useless stuff. Um, and the validation layer is written in C++, yes. Which sucks. But, um, but the validation layer is pretty cool though. It does a good job. It's a bit slow though. Um, but yeah, it, I don't recommend... I don't recommend 
looking into Vulcan unless you've done a bunch of 3D development in OpenGL or DirectX equivalent. Um, but if you're just looking at doing a, a, um, a little bit of graphics, it's not too hardcore and, and you don't want to become like an engine dev. Um, if, if you know SDL3 recently just had their GPU stuff merged to it. So this works on Metal Vulcan and DirectXs um, and you can just target their um, SDL GPU thing. Um, so yeah, I guess you could probably rip rip it out or just if you don't, don't want to use the whole of SDL but if you're, if you're already using SDL too or you know maybe I'll upgrade to three and try out this this got released a few days ago I've had, I've had a look at it and it doesn't look that bad it looks good for people who are just doing a sort of indie project and wants to, to make an engine but don't want to have to invest into some, you know these big graphics APIs and this will do 99% of what indie dev will want to do. Um, yeah, so I highly recommend giving this a go. It's kind of new though. Yeah, coming from OpenGL, it's the best thing since sliced bread. Sliced bread. Right, so we successfully iterate over entities and put them in the render queue. Pretty good. Um, what else is on the list? There is a list. So I type a list I put on Discord before I start streaming. So if you want to figure out what I'm working on six hours before and have a bit of a... Oh yeah. And also I posted about the SDL3 GPU thing, my thoughts on it on Discord as well. So that's just around there if you're interested in joining. Avaganda. You can join. Talk programming. So this is the list. Um, debug box region. Boxes for the regions. Sensible, right? We want to be able to debug, visualize these regions and when entities move between the regions. <laughs> Um, so that's quite easy. We're going to add it to the graphics payload. The graphics payload is, is what is passed to the render thread if we were to have a render thread. And then we'll render a frame with that graphics payload. Um, but yeah, for now we just have one. Um, it just has all of the instances in there for the models that we're trying to render. But we're also going to put in the uh, grid region dims how big is a region and then also how many how many of them so we're just gonna debug draw all of that and I think it would yeah um, hang on a minute so how are we going to do this? So we should probably have this in some local variable somewhere. Um, so noise. So we're just going to put these in, into the payload. So we clear the payload out and we say, right, graphics payload, region dims equal region dims. And then the grid dims is how many regions we have in 3D along a grid. And then inside the graphics, what the crap is going on here? What? Regions. Damn it. 
Uh, yeah, that is a better name. Regions Grid Dim. Bit of plural. Um, right, so now that we've got that all in there, we hop into the graphics module. And in the graphics module, we're going to, when we render a frame, we've got this super lovely draw 3D and draw 2D API, um, which allows us to debug draw to our heart's content. Well, I think there's obviously some maximum somewhere. But yeah, we have to debug draw. Or is it just draw 3D? Only. Right, draw 3D AABB world space, right? Oh, yeah, okay, so it'd be OBB then. Right, one of these. Hang on a minute. Right, so we'll simply go over all the regions. For range Z, zero, payload. I didn't paste it. Uh, I've got to find it again. Right. So simply, uh, we're going to do a draw 3D OBB. We're going to use the view from world matrix. It'll be the old one, but that's okay. Well, I can just move it. Done. Problem solved. Um, yeah, so view from world, current one. Um, then we would like to um, offset in local space, offset in world space. Um, so this would have to be halfway through the region, I reckon. So we will do something like, um, Center pause, so it'd be a cast payload um okay there's an XYZ <laughs> Casted float x times payload region dims. So we'll do that for the x, y's, and z's. Um, eh. I've got functions for these. Scale. Ain't a scale, is it? It's not a scalar. Cast. I'll do it. Right, so that's not really going to get us the center position because we still need to add um, add to it a bit. Just, oh, what am I doing? Um, add. Where about this? Send a pause to, we want to, the region dims and then have the half dims. So 0 0.5. Cool. So that should be the, uh, center position the half dims well we've got those here um get those half 
half dims, border thickness in local space. Uh, let's do a 0 0.1. I don't know. Bit of a color. Let's do a white. Z test. Maybe. Yeah, we'll do a Z test. Cool. So that should debug draw all the regions, and we should be able to see those around the players. Hey, Chandu, how you doing? Welcome back, sir. Uh, Mr. Casterman. Hey, Hero, are you using Arch with KD and NeoVim? Yes, yes, no. Um, I'm using Helix. Ah, sliced bread, I see that. That's borrowed sliced bread to you, Ray, Ray March. Where's, where's the lifetime on that borrow? Rightio, so that should be the debug drawing sorted out. I guess the answer is no. I'm kind of seeing it, right? What's this horrible? We can see it. Why am I seeing my UI? <laughs> There's... Right, let's get the texture viewer out. Uh, what do we want to look at? Depth texture? Uh, that's it. We really need to have a different scene texture, but... Right, so... Mm, right, let's take off the Z test. Maybe that's the problem. We're probably not filling. Yes, we're doing something weird, I reckon. Let's not Z test it. Yeah, there you go. It says our regions. It can't look weird. I don't know what's going on with that. But um, they're obviously not correct. Why are my entities here? Oh, no, they are correct, right? There is zero, 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 two, zero, zero, four, zero, zero. And this one will go into this one here. But then that means they're not, you know, this is actually refer like zero, zero, zero is a coordinate. And it means this tile here, right? So I need to really offset it by half a, half a, tile size when it goes into the renderer. So in, so I don't need this, uh, yeah, so here. So when we do a coordinate, we actually need to say plus 0 0.5 and that all ought to be good enough for now. Ah, what's the, what's the lifetime of that bread? Oh yes, yeah, that's a good lifetime. <laughs> ready to be in so now they're kind of like actually on their tile these ones are end up being bigger than a tile right i've got to sort that out still somehow but we ain't need to be perfect yet i'm not sure why but yeah there we go so here's our regions here's our entities this one is in region two and this one is in region Zero. Well, zero, region one, and then region one, I guess. So if we take a look at the, um, if we take a look at the iterator, oh, I was right there, weren't I? Um, let's instead just put an index in there rather than coordinate. So you would see that entity zero and one are going to be next to each other. And then the th third one is going to be quite a distance in the entity array because it's in a different region. So we run that. Yeah, zero, one, and 64 because there's 64 pre-allocated slots per region for organism entities. Right, cool. So I'm glad that's 
seems to be working. Um, we haven't really deleted stuff and things like this. So the next thing I would like to do is try and get an entity to move around the regions. And yeah, so we'll add another one. And this entity will move around the regions. And yeah, maybe we'll just get it to move back and forth. I'm not fussed about it going. You know, we'll make it go forward and back because then it jumps across many regions. What do you like about Helix that doesn't exist in any of them? Of them don't have much experience with editors at all. Well, I have is VS Code. Um, mainly, it's like a redo of. So the, the problem I have with NeoVim is that it took the Vim code base and then it just sort of like. I guess they did clean up the code a whole bunch. I don't really, I don't really look at it. I heard that. Um, but my problem is that it still had the Vim isms, and then they just added a bunch of stuff to it. So the analog I would say to that is C plus plus, right? It takes C and adds a bunch of stuff to it. Um, what I feel like we need is a new modal editor, one that's done without all the vimisms, but takes stuff like the modalness and all the modal nature of it, first class citizen modal nature, and tries to do it again without all the vim script. Um, and this is what it does. There's still, there's a, there's like a handful of things where I'm like, why haven't they got solutions for these yet? But I'm quite happy with it so far. Um, yeah, it comes out of the box with a lot of good stuff. No, you don't have to get plugins like you do in any of them. What about Emacs? Well, it's one of those, you know, it's not out of the box a modal editor, is it? Uh, I just use Manjaro because I've done many Arch installs in the past and I can be bothered to do it again. Yeah, and and then I have to learn like Elisp, Emacs Lisp, right? To configure the editor. I don't really want a programmatic config file. Um, so we add an entity and we'll get back an entity reference or entity ID. So entity ID for ent to two. Organism ID. So we'll do one more. Or maybe we'll just do this guy. Let's put him a little bit more over there. Let's do six. And we'll just say ants ID. Okay. Now we're simply going to change the wire. So every frame we'll bump up Y and then we'll bump it back. Or we could so int move defer or chord set deferred. So you get the entity ref, int ref. Um, nid dot raw. So you get entity reference, um, and then we want to move it to a new coordinate. So the new co yeah. So I think we can do like a a static sort of flow that will just increment by some small number every frame, and we'll probably just throw into sign. So it'd just be like move to six, um, sign F32 accumulator. So this gives value from minus one to one times by 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5. So 
gives the value from 0 to 1. Then we can multiply that by 8 or whatever we want to do. We can do 12, I think. Multiply by 12. Um, and it will go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So then 0. So it might not move every frame, but then it will move. It will gradually move, right? And that should be it. Ent ref from ID. This needs to be casted to an int. Right, let's see how much that works. So there's a few things going on when it moves. Yeah. So when it moves between regions, it actually has to physically copy the entity to another pool or to another section of the same archetype pool. Um, because all of our regions, hang on a minute, I'm doing a Windows thing. Yeah, so each of these regions has a pool of entities. This is like a night coordinate example. The ones in the same region sit contiguous to memory. When you go to a new region, they're just, you know, each region is has a fixed size of entities for this archetype. Which is configurable, which is configurable at boot, and when you change, when you change region, you've got to literally move the entity around, and this is why. Yeah, this is why there could be problems, right? Um, and this is why the entity reference only has a lifetime of a frame because it points to the direct place where it could be and stuff can move around. Um, let me just double check quickly. We had that sort of entity. Let's see. When you defer delete, you get when you do the movement. Um, Um, shoot, I think I didn't fully do this correct. So it is moving it from, it is copying the entity from one pool to the next pool, but it's not deleting it either. So I think after you do the move, you need to do like a remove as well. Um, yeah, so after it moves it, updates it to the new reference. This end remove. Right, this deallocates the slot from the pool. Yeah, so I think we need to move this remove above the move. And what we'll do is we'll move to the new region. Right. We keep note of the old reference. Old ref. And then afterwards we can just call an archetype. And remove. So 
So after copying it to the new pool, we remove it from this pool by copying by copying the one at the back. Yeah, so that was a problem. Okay, I'm glad we solved that. But still, it's not fixing the actual issue. Um, Yeah, I don't, I don't see why we're not moving. Oh. Huh. So I saw in the console it was saying something like, there was a fourth entity appearing, and then only three. But that one wasn't going away. Um... Yeah, so we should print out what we're trying to set it to every time. So whatever this this value is here. Um, well, I can do it in here, right? I can say uh, print move to so see how fast it's trying to move Um, oh, have you seen Z? Uh, yeah, give Z a go. Give Z a go a bit. That's alright. Still needs more polish, but it's pretty cool. Do you have a bit of textures for your models? No, there's no textures yet. Yeah, so it does take a few frames before it moves, but it does move reasonably quick. Right, and then it does create an extra entity for some reason. Um, so it's as if the one So let's look at that move function again. I don't trust uh the implementation we've done. So um right, let's decode this. So we get the source index of the entity that we're trying to move. Then we get the archetype as well. And we calculate the region that it's going to be in, or that it's in right now. And then we get the coordinate, and we work out the region it's got to go to. If they're the same, if the move was a success. If not, we check the pool counts at the new place. And if it's bigger than or equal to the capacity of the region, we return false. Next up, we get the base ent entity index by times in the flat region index for the new one by the capacities. Then we get the relative index here. Create the destination index, but from the base index plus the relative index, increment the region entity count. Um, get the entity ID, right? Get the store it in the new one. Um, uh, 
Then take note of the old reference, make the new reference, update the new reference in the record pool, then copy it to the new region with the special copy function for the specific archetype. So it copies every property over. Then we call this remove. Remove gets the region flat index again decrements the count gets the base index for all the entities gets the one at the end if the end index is equal to the current one we do nothing if not we copy it right so that seems like it would remove properly um, I don't know what's going on though like Let's look at the iterator. Right, so the iterator gets the counts. So it goes over the regions and gets the number of entities stored in the count thing. Um, So they must, they must hit something. Like if you're in 12, how many regions do we have again? So the regions are four by two, five. Oh, I was moving the Y axis, not the Z. Right, so it's probably going out of bounds. Right. We should put an assertion in for that. So if I try to move it out of bounds, that's a big problem. So set deferred, we go core assert. Um, So we want to get so the maximum one will be G and system region grid dims multiplied by GN system region dims and then that's the maximum so we want to say like all of these are less than so coordinate is less than max So we could, you know, we could just not accept it, right? If you go out of bounds, but it's kind of like faulty logic. Um, so, um, but then like the user of the code, like if they want to check, they say move here. Yeah, we'll put the assertion in for now. We'll see if it's a problem. So chord blah, blah, blah is out of bounds.
x x um quarter x um max dot x max dot y max dot z cool um right we buggered this one up a bit what's going on right i was expecting float but they're not Cool. Right, so we've got the assert, you know, six, six. Yeah, is out of bounds of this, right? Along the Y. So we're gonna go ahead and fix that now. That's a good assertion for now. We're gonna move, right, so zero on the Y and we'll go along the X. Sorry, along the Z. Right, so we crashed. Can I access object using a null ID? A null ID. Zero time. Right, so it's got four entities right now. Can you see here? So three entities and then four entities, but we've only got, we should only have three. Um, so I don't know what's going on there. Um, how that kind of worked out. So should we just try and keep moving it to the same spot and see what happens? So it's at, oh, it starts off at, Right, zero would be, yeah, that starts at zero, which put it at 0 0.5, so that'd be at six. All right. Okay, so just comment this out for a sec. And we'll put in um, just zero. Let's just keep putting in zero, see what happens. Right, so that seems to be okay. It shouldn't be doing anything. Um, let me bring back this line. Uh, comment that one out. So if we set it to, uh, what is it? It's yeah, so we set it to three, that'll go to the next region. Uh, well, let's just move it to two, see what happens. So that's all right. Apparently it's moved to two, but along the Z, right? But it sh should be here, but it's there. So I guess we should fix that problem first. So when you're doing this deferred move, the biggest problem I have so far is the, is it's not actually setting the move. So coords DST, index right so the reason why this we forgot it is because it used to be part of the the layout file for the and so we used to define it here right we used to put a property in for the coordinate but now it's a built-in thing so yeah it was just forgotten about um but that should also be the same for when we copy
entities then actually, so maybe it should be part of the copy function. So why don't we do that? So the copy, uh, let's go to the code gen, uh, the generated stuff. So there's the copy stuff at the bottom. So the copy is here, right? It's not copying the, the coordinates. So we should really put that in it as the, in the code generator, right? Um, so here we're in these copies. We just want to, you know, do something like this, where we say, pull header coordinates. That's the coordinate array. Um, destination index, um, pool, header, coordinates, source index. Right, I think that's, I think that's what we want. So we run the entity generator, made the new code. Now we can, uh, yeah, now we can see what happens, right? Wait, do we, um, yeah, so we don't need that line there anymore that we had. So we run it, the game now. We should see the fact that it has moved. No. This guy just went budge, apparently. I don't know why that is. Let's take a look at the generated file. The generated file says that it's not done this. Huh. Right, let's take a look at this again. So, int copy. Printing it. Code generate it. What gives, man? Oh, I didn't reload the, the, right. I didn't reload it in the text editor, so it is there. Right, here it is. So we're copying the coordinate over. That's good. So, right. But something that we're still missing, if we just do a very light move, so in, in the deferred move um, side of things, uh, so when we do the deferred move code, what we would like to say is if they are at the same, re so they don't move across the region boundary, we would like to get the pool, go to the header, sorry, go to the coordinates, at the source index, update the coordinates B chord. And that's what was missing there. So let's try that. So now we should see that the entity has actually moved. Oh, progress. So here's the entity. It's now moved there from here. So let's move the entity one more time. So if we put it at three, that should have technically gone to the next region. So let's see if it does the move region code correctly. Right. Um, no, it's not moved the region, wait. Why is it? Oh no, the region dim is four, four two four. Okay, right. So we put it at four. It should have moved over. We've got a crash. No biggie. So what happened is that um, it created another entity. So obviously it doesn't delete the old one properly.
even though I thought we thought we did that. So we're gonna put a programmatic breakpoint in, and we'll just you know have a gander. So basically, here. So we're gonna study what's what goes on because we looked at it and couldn't find anything. <clears throat> right, so if we run it in the debugger, have a look. So in the de debugger now, we do a move. So we should have removed the old one. Um, I think that's the main problem. So it makes the new one. I think that's all successful. Do so you want to keep the old position alive if you want to make an undo function? Um, so undo will probably be a separate system where we store an array of of deltas or something like that like what or actions that have happened right um i don't think we're going to have rollback functionality in this game i'm not sure but in some form of editor maybe that is for sure So we move the entity. Then this function here. So that will make sense, right? Increment this, but it's just this remove. Like, what is going on? It would have decremented that to two, right? region flat index one zero entities are now in there what's he talking about To... Oh yeah, no, no, that, that makes perfect sense. There is only one. There's only one entity in this, and that's moves, right? Perfect sense. So it does. Yeah, it doesn't do a copy. Right, that's good. That's good. So. Wait, along with doing the copy, you also need to copy the re the record IDs. We're definitely missing that. Hang on a minute. Part of what's missing with the remove is that the int index and Yes, the record ID is used so we can take we can take an entity ref and then get back an entity ID. We need to make sure those are updated as well. Um, yeah. So that should remove it. But we didn't really have have that problem, I think. So why then in the next? So we recompile and run it and come out of those functions. Why then in the next iteration are we encountering that third one, which is at 64? I don't get that. Oh, I do get it, maybe. 
No, 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 it should be fine. Everything's in the right order, I think. So we finished that. It was a success, so we carry on. Resize to zero. Done. Then we set deferred for the next frame. No biggie. Go through here. Now, the first iterator is going to go over two entities and add those. One, two. Now, this is where it's questionable. When it goes in here, it goes to the next region. And count is zero. Right. Huh. Great. Right, okay, so when do we get here then? Okay, that's correct. That's good. Um, so was it the next frame? Let's still continue. But it seems like the next frame. So the next frame. Ah. I know what's going on. So basically, it's quite easy to fix this. Um, so the way the deferred create works is we have two entity counts. One is the next frame and one is this frame's one. So simply when we try and add entities to the pools, we just, uh, we just put them in there right away, but we are only, inc we only bump in, bump, allocate the next frame count, right? Then at the beginning of the next frame, we sort of commit those changes. So the iterator looks at this one which is the current frame one. Um, so that's okay. But what's happening is when we do a move or a remove, we are only changing this one here. So what we actually need to be doing is change, be changing both uh, when we do that. So we change both this frame and the next frame one. Maybe there's another way to do it, but it seems all right. So the next the next frame around, it will just be undoing what it's done here. Cool. So let's try that. Hopefully that works. Still got a problem. Why why have we got all this? Um, graphic stuff on this. Let's remove the profiler. There's too many shaders running. Right, so the first frame is... That seems all right, doesn't it? Look, so we've fixed the problem now, but for some reason the data is now wrong. So, why is that? Take that. So let's put this model ID. I think it's getting stomped or something, not being copied right. Right, so model ID 444 on the first frame. And then it's two four four, and then it's two four zero. Right, 
let's make it a little bit more understandable. So there we go. So entity So for some reason the model ID is the models are changing even for zero and one. Oh well, that's that's a bit strange. Uh, let's take a look at model ID zero, one, two, three, four. We want four. Not two, two is box. Um, but for some reason on the second frame, zero, the first entity, which we haven't even changed anything, changes to model two. I'm not sure what writes memory into that, to be honest. Seems a bit bizarre to me. Um, If we remove the movement code, let's see if that has anything to do with it. So it seems to be the movement code, although I wonder Yeah, so the first so many frames are different. Oh sorry, I'll still a bunch of fours, right? Which is what we want. So it's the fact that we're actually trying to move. Okay, so maybe the copy function's wrong. For those very specialized code generated copies, maybe they're wrong. Shouldn't be. So. They look all right. We're moving the coordinate and the model. Um, so this is where we're going to go into the debugger and probably use a watch point, maybe. It's quite easy to do it. Or be a bit fiddly because GDB is fiddly for watch points, but should be quite easy. So we do go into break and sys in it, run that. And yeah, the end was like a new, I printed a new line, but I put an end before it. It was just to separate the frame between frames. So when we instantiate Let's get in there. Organism. Pool model. Beautiful. So we do a, a watch point on that. Um, Watch dereferenced E32. You have to type out manually, it's a bit annoying. But it works between functions that way. It was obviously like a heap allocated thing. Right, here we go. What have you done? Right, so this is in the first time. This is all right. Yeah, we instantiate the first organism. This is this is fine. That that's what we want. Continue. Hmm. You're telling me that this buffer. is not big enough. So 
So, uh, I know what's going on. Damn it. So, record IDs. Yep. Right, what a silly person I am. Oh, no, 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 no. This is fine. The number of regions multiplied by the number of regions per entity. Hmm. So why is this overflowing with the other one? Um. I wonder what that number is. So what is that capacity number? 576. So when we try to do that move, we moved it to number 576. Why was that? Right, so why was the... This, right, this destination index. Maybe my flat coordinate thing is just wrong. Yeah, maybe the conversion to the flat coordinate thing is wrong. That's possible actually. Um, yeah, so we take a look at that region base. Yeah, five, seven, six. So that new region flat index nine. How many regions have we got? We've got three by one by th three. Yes, it's nine regions. So why are we on region nine? So it's this function here, which is probably wrong. Let's run that again. So P coordinate. So six. Oh. No, this is fine. Divide by the number of regions. One, one, one. Yeah, sorry, one, zero, one. Yep, that's right. Now how do we get a nine out? Something's wrong with this maths here. So one Z Oh. I'm using region dims instead of region grid dims. I reckon that's it. So, whoopsie. So the grid dims be the number of regions. And that's what I wasn't using. Easy mistake. All right, let's try that out. Hopefully that works. Right, we've moved an entity to the next region. Look at that. So now we should just be able to plug in that sign function which will make it move back and forth. And fingers crossed. Let's 
get rid of that print. Um, go back to the main function. We'll re-enable this line here. And so we should now see an entity that will move forward and back across the map. Look at him go. He's navigating across the pools. Where are you So if you notice in the printing code on the left hand side here, when the entity goes to the next regions, this last one, the entity index changes dra dramatically because it's changing between the the region, the regions and they're fixed allocated in the archetype pool. Right, that's quite all right. So obviously in, in the game, we're not gonna have like, things are gonna be more smooth, but the underlying system will be the same, right? You will request to move to the next coordinate. Um, and if you can't go there, then obviously you, you won't be able to like move any more forward and it would sort of like probably put you back on that tile you're currently on. Oh crap. Oh, that's a flame point rounding thing probably. Oh, why is that too? Oh no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, it's a flame point rounding thing probably. I don't know. I'll probably fix it. It went like one past the end, basically. It should have stopped at 11, not 12. But yeah, we'll probably have it such that the player will, will smoothly move and look like it is smoothly moving, but it always will settle on a tile. Um, so that, that'll be quite easy to do. That's a system that's built on top of the entity system. Like the entity system is just a different thing. Yeah, we just know about these. Um, so we're nearly there with the entity system now. Like we have entities, we have regions. Um, we could call this done, but I think I'll be missing one more thing. Like we want to put a, a bunch of tiles down, like blocks. I right? put a little you know, put some floor down. Um, so, um, I think I want to add one more thing to the entity system and that is a 3D grid. Um, so we can check neighboring cells pretty quick. And I think I want to make it use um, entity references. So when we sort of, move entities or when we yeah, when we move entities or when we delete entities in the entity system they're going to also populate a grid um they're also going to fill in a grid cell with the proper entity reference in there and this will allow us to do things like have in tiles and be able to check neighboring tiles very quickly, but also keep the tiles as part of the entity system such that we can add properties to them and not have to shoehorn the behavior in with some extra code on the side. Um, yeah. And so I think we'll have to figure out like some entities will be able to occupy a space like in this 3d grid but other entities don't really want to be inside that 3d grid at all like say we have projectiles right the projectiles want to be in the entity system 
but the projectiles do not want to be in that sort of grid thing, right? But yeah, I got to think about. I got to think about that. Um, but obviously, you, you want the projectiles to interact with the floor um, in some manner, right? But you don't mind if, say, two projectiles occupy the same tile, maybe. I've got to think about that. But maybe, maybe we don't mind. But so that's one more thing we want to do on the entity system. And then we can end it there and move on to doing a multi-threaded um, system. Cool. Um, right, it's getting late here. I'm going to put the code up on the repo for those who have access to the repo. If you, you want to get access to the code, um, if you support via Twitch or Ko-Fi, thank you very much. You can access the code right there and run on your local machine um, and also support me along the way. Um, yeah, if you want to know what we're doing in the next eight months, there's a video up on there. It's called the Game Tech Plan. There's also a new entity system video which goes over the plan for this entity system we've basically finished now but i will be doing another devlog after we've done the final um thing which we just went over and that will go up probably next friday um right let's find someone to raid quick um be our next beyond on tuesday guys at 7 30 p.m gmt plus one same time on thursday and then four hours ago next sunday thank you joker dan thank you wajilla finally finished part one you were in the graph awesome which that's pretty sweet i'm still puzzled how you've only got like two lines of code it sounds bananas to me please explain is right if you show me more on the Discord, Wajilla. I'm, I'm confused. Get ready the zig guy, but keep ready the zig guy. I need to CC. I need to see more. Ah, last miles. Good old last miles. Awesome. Thank you, Regina. Appreciate it. All right, guys, have a good start to your work week. I'll see you all in future one.